So guys, we're back with the Chevy Equinox. Um, the lady said, oh, it came up now. Because she had said before, and I'll probably add the video on before this, that uh, I had the P00, I think it was 10 before, it was 110, one, one there's only one code. But now, uh, she said her son scanned it and it had the P0010 and P0011 code. So, and I just scanned it and that's what I got. So, let me print this. We'll go in. We'll go in, we'll see. We'll see when the code's set. I wonder if the mileage is going to be right this time. We can look at it. Yeah, freeze frame. Okay, so looks like it happened three times. Ignition cycle since last malfunction one. See, and it says like this distance since first failure, 497 miles. What are we at? 61,873. And I have a sticker up here for 66,368. Now I put the sticker for 5,000 miles. So. That is. Like what, 500 miles? So it's over 500 miles in a week? Yeah. It's like 500 miles. So, she told me she doesn't drive that much. Look at that. Last failure, 518. So, this must have just happened after I did the oil change. I think somebody just pulled in with a Tesla. Let's see. Intake 107, engine coolant, so it's warm. Let's see, I don't remember if I save this. We'll save this first. Let's see. Hoping that we'd get like a runtime calc, like counter. GM usually has it. Engine run time, five minutes. Engine off time, four. I think she said this stalls in reverse, so I wonder if maybe there's an issue. I don't think she told me that before. Oh, there we go. Desired and actual intake cam desired 16 and it's at zero. So we do have a failure right there. Go look at the other one. Looks like it happened at the same time. Yeah, this happened at the same time, 5.06 for the time. Let's go back, let's look at the other one. I think the other one's different. So we had two intake codes that happened at the same time. Let's 
So, four ignition counts since the first time. I think what we'll end up doing is we'll scope fuel pressure is higher in this one. The other ones are 600. This one's 900. Engine run time 24 seconds. Engine off time is at 2 hours and 41 minutes. I'm assuming. Let's see if we can get something to act up here. Let's clear the codes. Let's cycle the key real quick. Let's go on a functional test and we'll see if we can get these actuators to move. They're solenoids. Actually, I think that's just on and off. Let's just move them. Intake. Look how they put the e-brake right next to the OBD2 port. Let's see if we can get it to fail. So it's not failing right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook my hook my scope up to it, and we'll see if it drops out. So I'll be right back. I'll set everything up. So guys. What I did was probe the yellow trace on the brown wire, which I believe is brown as a common power feed because the brown's on the, the brown's on the uh, exhaust cam too. Not sure, so I'm just guessing. And then I got the green trace in the other wire, and then I have my ground lead going to the ground for the stud off the valve cover. So hopefully, if we have like a round issue, I'll be able to see it real easily and you'll see the voltage go up on both solenoids. And if it's power feed, you see the power drop out. That's what I'm hoping at least. So I'm gonna get this in intake back on. We'll take it for a drive and see what happens. So guys, got everything back on. Made sure my leads look good. There we go. See what our information looks like on our tool. I didn't set anything up yet. Let's go. Snooze. Scope. Lab scope. I guess we'll put P detect on. I don't know what the scale is going to be. I'm assuming it's 12 volts. Most all solenoids are 12 volts. Assuming that was just noise in the beginning. Yeah, it must be noise. The top one's ground. So you're seeing the ignition. Let's 
see. There's two ways we can do this. We can either leave it like that. I don't know if you, oh, there you guys go. We can either leave it like that, or we can zoom way out and look for it to drop out. I don't even think we're really getting any more on the screen. Yeah, I guess we leave it like that. Guys, I gotta wait. Somebody parked behind me. So I'm gonna pause this real quick and wait for them to move. So, guys, I didn't record it, but I took it for a test drive. Um, I can't get the variance to go over four. The only time it goes over four is when I shut the car off. Let's see if I can shut it off right now. See if it goes up. Yeah, see, it goes up to 16, and that's it. And I don't know if the exhaust does the same thing. No, the exhaust does not do it but the intake spikes every time you shut the car off no idea why it does it let's see if we'll, we'll do it again real quick see that it's really really weird let's see what the desired and actual says Okay, so it doesn't spike on there. Maybe it's just a scan tool issue. It was just something that I had noticed. But, while I'm driving, the waveform looks perfect. I, mean, I don't see any dropouts, don't see anything. The ground's not elevating or anything. I tried driving with it zoomed out. Like I, I drove around for a little bit with it at like five seconds or ten seconds. Maybe ten seconds we don't really get anything. There we go. It's because I have a trigger on right now. Actually wait, the trigger's not even on. So why did that not maybe just too big of a time base to see it. did a trigger so that I could see if it got stuck or something. So I don't know, I'm going to have to call the customer and see when this is happening. I don't know if it's like the lights are on or something. I tried turning the lights on and stuff and driving. The waveform didn't really change. So I tried using the wipers. I'm thinking, well, maybe there might be a ground issue. So I go back and look at the diagram again. And I think the little references to the PCM it said and the control the control is from the PCM so I'm not sure maybe I can go up and just carefully wiggle the harness or something to see if this acts up but I don't see any issues right now again this one might take a while to find So guys, since I can't seem to get this car to act up, what I'm going to do is take my heat gun. I'm going to put my heat gun on and I'm going to let it sit here, hopefully without melting my coat, melting any of my leaves. And we're going to try to get this solenoid. 
to uh, act up. I've seen somebody do this before. Let's see if we can get this set up. Should be good there. How about 250? I think that should be low. that should be low enough not to melt anything. We're gonna let that sit there. We're gonna get our scope all set back up. We're gonna get connected to the car a while. Then we're gonna actuate this thing. And hopefully this thing will fail. I really don't like replacing parts that uh, I can't prove are an issue, but this thing's such a common problem. I bet you if I asked anybody, they'd like to just replace it. Oh, I'm sorry, that's secondary. Let's see. Oh, you know what? We probably shouldn't be in this. We should probably go under got a component test so we can bring our uh, so we can bring the scope up too. Let's see Equinox. Really doesn't matter what we picked. Turn this one on. Uh, let's go back to, to a 50 millisecond like it had it. Bring this out, now we can hook our scanner up. Oh, did I exit? I don't, I don't, I don't remember if I exited. Let's go back into this camshaft phaser. Oh, I think I did when I went back. Functional test. Solenoids. Oh, I think I gotta turn the key on because I don't think the key's on. Oh, I do have the key on. Let's turn everything off. Let's try this. Let's see. Did we just get it to act up? I don't know what that little 
thing is in there. Two peak detect. Okay, so we gotta wait 60 seconds. Oh yeah, that solenoid's nice and toasty now. Let's see if we can do it yet. See if there's any issues. I don't see any issues. What we can do is we can wiggle this at the same time. See if there's an issue. See if it'll let us do it yet. See if there was any issues with this. Oh man, the sun came out, it's really hot. Oh, was there a change when I wiggled this? There was a change. Oh, so look at that, we weren't getting pulled all the way down the ground. Did you guys see that? It wasn't pulling all the way down the ground. I didn't even notice that at first. And then when I wiggled it, it went all the way down. Huh. I wonder if we can save this file. Save us. 2013 Chevy Equinox. Camshaft actuator. Wiggle. After heat gun. Let's try this again. That's kind of interesting. Let's put it back on record. Let's go back to home scanner. So when I wiggle this, look at that, it goes up. I don't know if you guys saw that, like when I wiggle it, the ground elevates. Oh, let's see. Let's... See if we can zoom out and see it. See that right there? The ground elevated when I was wiggling it. Damn. More information. Let's go back to got a component test. Set up.
I don't know, it's set up. I want to save. File, save. Two. See if we can do it just here. Make sure it's not my leads. But I don't think it's my leads because the ground is going off. Uh, the, the ground off a stud in the back, so I can't even touch that. Oh, look at that. We can get it dacked up right here. Just by wiggling this thing. You guys see that? It's not my leads. I can move my leads and it's not. That's the that's the phaser doing that. Look at that. Found it. That's awesome. Heat gun. See we're stuck at two volts right now. I'm gonna get a new one, we'll put it in and we'll see if that does it. So I'll be right back guys. So guys, I want to add before I replace these sensors. I think the reason why a lot of people can't see a failure with these, before I even confirm that that's actually 100% the issue, uh, I think the reason is, is if you're scoping this, you don't have the engine cover on. So now you got airflow coming over top, which can take some of the heat out where that cover has a lot of foam. I'm gonna have to fix that, but it has a lot of foam. So the foam's gonna trap the heat in when this is sitting over top. I guess the glue went bad on this foam. But that's what I'm thinking. And using the heat gun, because I had it set at 250, which is probably lower lower than what they actually get to because you figure the coolant temperatures probably around like what 200 220 when you're driving so they're probably going to get warmer than that but i just wanted to add that i thought that was kind of interesting so guys here's something interesting i plug this back in we wiggle it we can get it to go up to like two volts or so like just wiggling this I think it goes up to like 220. Wiggling this connector right now. Okay. So see how it's going up and down. So if we unplug this. Let me see if I can unplug this without bending my probes up too much. So we unplugged this. The bias voltage on this is 2.45 and it doesn't move with my probes. So we know we got a good connection. We plug in our new intake phaser. This is from GM, AC Delco. We plug this in. We're seeing 0 0.04 and you wiggle it. No change. See that? It's staying rock solid. So that was our issue. I think the phaser is going open. The actuator is going open circuit. So guys, I got the new actuators in. Is my camera all dirty? There we go. Got the new actuators in. Got them all tied down. There we go. Got the connectors all clipped. So I started up. See if there's any change here. And they are new AC Delco ones. Here's the boxes. It just down poured. I make sure these are tight, but I'm pretty sure they're tight. Yeah, they're not budget. Okay, so now we're gonna start it up. We're gonna see if everything's good to go. Got the scope set up. Put it on record. Let that sit there. And I noticed that the intake had metal on it. I'm replacing both. I always replace both at the same time. But uh, yeah, there's like metal and debris it's real faint not a lot i've seen a lot worse especially when turbos go 
on these. So it started up. Hopefully it starts up because I left the key on, I think. And it downpoured here for like 20 minutes. Oh, we got it. Just barely. Didn't reset the time, so that's good. There we go. Let's see what our pattern looks like. I'll have to go back and see if our pattern was actually getting pulled down to zero. I think it was before because I usually check that. So we'll let this sit here and warm up, but I think we're good to go. I'm going to clean up some stuff and then we'll come back. So guys, this thing's been running for like an hour. Everything seems to be good. The cam phasers seem to be working good. I'm gonna take the intake off and put this all put back together. And then I'll take it for a test drive, but I think we're fixed. Let's try to wiggle this. Yeah, look at that. No issues, it's not even budging. I stand rock solid. So yeah, I think that cam phaser might have been getting high resistance or shorting out. So guys, got it all back together. Things all tight. I'm gonna take it for a test drive. I'm also curious if we'll still see like the one to four percent variation that we saw before. Conditioner does it. Uh, doesn't affect this too much. Everybody else seems to get 2.4 liters all the time. I never get them. This is like one of two that I've gotten in the last five years. Steady going at 58 
miles an hour down the highway right now. Which is completely straight road, and this is staying like dead on at zero right now. Now we're coming up to a red light. Probably some learning that's going on too. I should probably look down to see if there's a reset or something. But definitely a lot smoother than it was. Yeah, it seems like every time I let off the gas, we see like a little spike. Pretty sure last time we took this for a test drive, it was going like one, two, one, two, or something like that, or two, three, like almost the entire time. definitely see the difference between changing it. So I'm going to stop the video here and then when we get back to the shop we'll see if there's like any relearns or anything for this. So I'm back at the shop. Let's uh, save this and go back through it real quick. I always save all my drives that way if I have another car that comes in. Doesn't seem to be as noisy. I'd have to go back and look at the other one, but I'm pretty sure this is a lot less like activity going on than before. Let's see. Would it be in there functional? It's 
it's not generic functions. So I guess that's our only option is what's in here. Yeah, and it doesn't look like we have anything. Because this is the same test that we did before. So there you guys go. We can check codes real quick. None. Um, we can check the status. Never really seen anybody do this, but I've had to use it a couple times. Pass, pass. Check one. Pass, pass. So there you guys go. You guys like this. See you later.